Are you lost in the chaotic whirlwind of day-to-day busyness? Do you yearn for a deeper sense of meaning and purpose in your life? Welcome to Be You, Your Story, Your Purpose, the podcast dedicated to empowering women on their journey of self-discovery and finding their true purpose through their own story. I'm your host, Brenda Simmons. Welcome to the Be You, Your Story, Your Purpose podcast. I'm so excited that you could join us today. I wanted to introduce our guest today. She is an amazing person and tell you a little bit about her. Her name is Melissa Price. She is passionate about empowering parents to teach their children emotional intelligence. She loves connecting parents to their children through play, as well as supporting parents in increasing their own emotional intelligence. She has over 20 years of experience teaching youth creative problem solving, acting, art, goal setting, and more. Melissa is a Create Your Story guide, a life story and life studio coach, among other many other methods of transformation. As a coach and teacher, she is committed to empowering individuals to create their best lives by cultivating emotional intelligence and self-awareness. Melissa is the owner of Creative Family Connection and the creator of the Emotion Commotion card game, which we're going to talk about today. She has helped countless individuals from children to adults develop greater self-awareness, empathy, and emotional regulation. Her Emotion Commotion game has been used in schools, counseling centers, in prison, and corporate retreats, and has received widespread praise for its effectiveness in helping individuals build emotional resilience. Thank you so much for joining us today, Melissa. I'm so excited to have you here. And I'm wondering if we could start out by you sharing with us your story. This is a podcast about sharing our stories. And so I'd love for you to share us where you've been, how you, and kind of that story of how you got to where you are now. Wow. Life story. Okay. Buckle up. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so grateful to be here, by the way, Brenda. So funny. Thank you so much. Um, So I began as a child in a family that was abusive, Mm -hmm. parents doing the best that they could with what they knew how, but having had lots of trauma in their, their backgrounds. So I learned at an early age that my own emotions were not important. I don't even know that I knew what emotions really were for. Um, I just knew that to keep myself safe, I needed to be aware of how one of my parents was feeling and what they were thinking Yeah, and adjust myself accordingly. So that's how I started on my emotional journey to get here. Um, My parents or my, my father rather was put into prison when I was 12 And I started to experience freedom. I remember opening the fridge for the first time when I was hungry. Wow. Uh, That was like a choice I hadn't had before because so much was under uh, my father's control. So it was, um, it was a new world, but it was also a new world of emotions that all of a sudden came rushing out (laughs) and I didn't know what to do with them. I thought that was really intense. It was, it was, I felt a lot of anger and because I didn't know what anger was for and I judged it because anger is what got me hurt. when I was. um, I really hated that side of me. So I hated a part of me because I didn't know what anger was about. And now I know that a lot of times it's about boundaries that have been crossed. You may not have put boundaries in place or keep to boundaries. And so I just would get extraordinarily angry at normal things and most of the time take out that anger on myself. Wow. I was a teenager there were the slam doors and things like that. That's kind of normal for teens sometimes, but sometimes I would like take a favorite book that I loved and I loved reading. It was my escape when I was younger. Yeah. 
sometimes I might take a favorite book and just rip it up page by page just to get some of that oh, emotion. Wow. Out. I know. And then it would hurt myself, which was. Yeah. Not- Cause then you don't have your favorite book anymore. <laughs> you know, but w- what do you do? You just don't know how to get rid of that emotional energy. And most of the time I would just stuff it in. Right. Yeah. That's what I learned from uh, being a child in the situation that I was in. And from the adults around me, we don't want to show other people how we feel because it might make them uncomfortable. Right. Or we might lose control. And then how would that make us look? So many reasons that we culturally learn how to deal with our emotions. And our parents, bless their hearts and their parents' hearts, they did not learn emotional intelligence. And it's really kind of a newer thing that we're more aware of in the last few decades. So I have wow. studied it a lot so I could fix that part of me. <laughs> so what, what was the point where you finally decided, oh, this is a problem that I want to fix in myself. And so how did you get to that point? And then what, what did you do? Like how, what, what were the first things that you sought out to give you that emotional intelligence information? Great question. I enjoyed my high school years and my young adult years. I felt like they were my real childhood where I could choose what I wanted to do and have fun and hang out with friends and, and have some freedom. But when I became a soon to be mom, it really struck me that like I knew from a young age, I was not going to carry the abuse on with my kids. Right. However, that didn't still mean that I would lose my temper sometimes. And I really did not want to carry that into my parenting. Right. So I, I went to a 12 step group for incest survivors. I um, started watching a lot of Oprah as a yeah. young one and being. Um, being able to like read different books and learn a little bit more about life and how I work and emotions. So that started my journey. And I've also been a lifelong learner. I just love to learn. So as I, I homeschool my children and I wound up teaching a lot of different classes to a lot of different kids over the last 20, 25 years. And one of the things that I kept studying was emotions, especially like I'm, I'm working with these beautiful teenagers and they're amazing. I love talking to them and they love talking to me and they would share with me their challenges and it would break my heart because a lot of them were starting some bad habits that lead to some pretty hefty addictions that I was very, very familiar with from close family members in my life. And I studied a lot about addiction and really learned how emotions have a play into, into that. And I wanted to help these kids not get stuck as an adult. Like I've seen some close, you know, people in my life get very, very stuck because of their addictions. So, right. So can you share with us, um, like what's an example of, you know, maybe because you've obviously taught this for many, many years. Mm -hmm. Um, When you start teaching this to children, you know, emotional intelligence to to children, like, how do you even do that? Obviously, you you started before you created your game. So how did you even approach that? And what, what, what were some effects of that? Like, did they learn it quickly? Or like, what was that like? Well, actually, I started teaching the emotional intelligence part after I created the game. Oh, okay. So I was learning probably about um, four or five years ago, I was talking to a friend about all that I was learning about emotions and emotional intelligence and things like that. And she asked me to speak to a young group of moms who had very young children And she wanted me to talk to them about how to help them manage their emotions. So I did some research and I was thinking, I I deal with teens all the time. 
Yeah. But how do we teach really young kids? Because my kids were grown up, you know. So I started uh, noticing that play is a super effective teacher. And that's kind of what I love about teaching any anyway. I teach playfully. <laughs> But how do I use play to help moms teach their kids how to manage their emotions? And that's when I got the, what I call a divine download about this card game that I created. And so after I started taking that around the neighborhood and realizing that this was something that was really legit and super helpful, even Mm -hmm. beyond what my purpose for it was, then I created a class around teaching emotional intelligence. So to get back to your question, um, playing in all different kinds of ways is a super effective way to teach kids of all ages. In fact, I teach adults (laughs) how to do that. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. I love that. So before we dive into the game, I'm wondering if you could share with us a little bit about what you've learned about emotional intelligence, the emotional regulation, maybe even dive in at the beginning of, you know, what is an emotion and, you know, what purpose do emotions have? So experts don't always agree, but an emotion is a feeling in our body quickly followed by or preceded by a thought in our head in response to something. Right. So for instance, if I'm little and I've never been exposed to dogs and a dog barks at me, it's coming at me, I'm probably going to feel some fear because I haven't experienced this before and it's loud and it's scary and I don't know what's going on. That might be the beginning of a phobia of dogs. Hopefully not. Mm-hmm. We have an adult who helps us get through that. Um, but if I've grown up with dogs and I love them and a dog comes you know, bounding towards me, I'm going to like grab him and love on right. him. <laughs> so we all have different experiences and we experience different emotions accordingly. Um, but it's a feeling and a thought. And they're right. so closely related, which comes first, chicken or the egg. It depends. Yeah. Like, um, So we, we have this feeling in our body and it sends chemicals flooding and we feel different emotions and different spots in our bodies. And so if I'm feeling fear because a dog's charging and I'm scared, I might start like my fight, my fight or flight might start. Yeah. Right. And I might start feeling it. Like when I think about it, I'm like holding my breath right now. <laughs> right. And I'm probably wanting to like run. So holding breath and running probably isn't a good idea at the same time, but (laughs) what's happening in my body right now when I think of it. And then we have the opportunity in emotional regulation to identify what emotion it is that we're feeling, allowing that emotional energy out. And sometimes that's automatic. If I have to run from a dog, I'm running from a dog. That's getting my emotional energy out and directed, right? Right. Other times I might be really sad because I've I've lost a pet, let's say, and that I might not get that emotional energy out right away, but I might through just crying or right. talking to a friend or journaling. There's all kinds of emotional tools we can use to get that energy out if it doesn't, if we aren't able to allow it out or we forget to. Mm-hmm. Um And this is where we get stuck. So let's talk about that in a second. But after we get that energy out, then hopefully we can take some time to think about why did I experience that emotion? Um, And that's not necessarily a have to do, but you can think about why, why did I experience that? What led up to that? But really what message does my emotion have for me? And so if I am sad because I've lost lost a pet, Mm -hmm. then that's just telling me that I'm going to miss something that was really important to me. Now, some people might go out and take the action of getting another animal or doing a memorial service, some way to honor. But if we take an action in response to the message our emotion has for us, it moves us forward. Right. 
something I don't think we really are taught by our parents because they didn't understand that either. Right. For the most part. And, um, and a lot of times we're not even taught anything but to stuff our emotions and truly who wants to feel the uncomfortable ones? Like I didn't sign up for that. Right. (laughs) Right. I would say all of us at one time or the other turned away from our uncomfortable emotions to something that will comfort us. Yeah. And that leaves this unresolved. We're not getting the message and we get emotions stuck in our bodies, creating pain over and over again as we experience similar situations and creating diseases at times. And so to em- embrace the uncomfortable, to embrace that emotion and really look for the message after we've gotten that energy out is super vital. That is what helps us move forward, that keeps us healthy, and something that we really need to teach our parents if they don't know so that they they can teach their kids because these kids are struggling. They're struggling at school. We're seeing too much suicide. We're seeing the beginnings of addictions in childhood. And it's it's not okay on my watch. No, <laughs> so no. What I do. It's not. And I, you know, having my kids are all all well, they're barely grown, right? <laughs> my my youngest is 18 right now, but I just in my own journey, and it's been interesting to me how, and I'm so glad that we're talking about this for my very first podcast, because I just feel like this is foundational, you know, and in my own life, obviously, you know, we weren't taught that as, you know, school parents or nobody taught that when we were kids. And I have found emotional intelligence and just processing my emotions to absolutely be vital to my own well-being and it's been interesting that the more that I do it and the more I understand oh this emotion came back you know is haunting me basically from an experience that I had when I was 12 years old or or even younger or old you know it just it doesn't matter when it comes but but you're right if we don't process that and get it out they just they stay with us forever you know so I love 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 that you are talking about this. And I love also that you're sharing it with adults and kids and, and all of the above. So, so I'd love for you to share with us a little bit about your game. It's called Emotion Commotion. How I would, I'd love even to know what was that process for you of creating the game? You've told us a little bit about that and the download and stuff, but, but if you can go into a little bit more detail on that, I would absolutely love that. Sure. My family loves to play games and that's natural. Um, So when I was figuring out how can I use play to help these moms, I came across these two articles about the Inuit Indians and how they have very little mental health issues in their community. And to boil it down, (laughs) they do a couple of things. They tell stories to their kids that to me are like whoppers. <laughs> like yeah. one, of the, one of the examples I read about was a parent might tell their toddler, like, don't go too close to the ocean because a big sea monster will come out and grab you and take you under and you'll never see your parents again. Right. Like, now that's, that's, me that's a whopper. <laughs> <Right. laughs> might, that might work, right? Yeah. Um, but So I don't know that I necessarily love that one. It doesn't seem natural to me. But um, the other thing that they would do is they would exaggerate. So another example I read about was a mom might hand a two-year-old a rock and say, throw the rock at mom. Yeah. And the two-year-old would because, okay, sounds good. You know? (laughs) Yeah. And then would respond by play acting like, ow, that really hurts. Did you Mm -hmm. want to hurt mom? And so they're not like telling their kids what to do necessarily, but the little kids wheels are, are spinning, right? Right. (laughs) What? (laughs) There was a consequence to my action. And, and so, um, I was just gnawing on that information as I was thinking, how do I teach these principles? Right. Through play. And then 
I don't know, this idea of, well, if we have people acting things out and then I give them an emotion to act it out in, what would that look like? And so I might pick a card, let's say, show the emotion by making the sound of a cow. That might be backwards. Sorry. Nope, I can see it. Yeah. Okay. And then just randomly pick an emotion and let's see if you can guess the emotion. Okay. Okay. I'm ready. All right. Moo. Moo. Confused? Moo. Not quite. Keep guessing. Hmm. At first I thought it was anger. Oh. But yeah, because just the way you came in. and then then you went up and I thought, oh, maybe it's questioning or or something like that. Sort Kinda of close. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're not you're not too far. Um let me try it again. Okay. Moo. 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 Scared. So or it's unsure. Mm -hmm. It's the unsure and scared. If you married them together, you're right on track. Mm, okay. Mm. This is really good because it gives you a vocabulary of emotions too. So that's, I love this because now my brain is going, okay, well, what other emotions are there? And I'm kind of drawing a blank. So you might have to help me out a little bit. So normally when you're playing this game, there's a lot more people playing, right? Right. And so you'll get a lot of guesses thrown out. So kind of like a, a charade kind of a thing. It. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little harder when you're doing it just by yourself. Um, when the guesses start dying down, I'll say it starts with an N because then that gets your brain thinking again. Okay. Mm. So does it start with an N? Okay. It does. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Ooh. Hmm. So you're saying it was kind of like unsure, uncertainty, or... fear, scared. So some fear in it. Mm -hmm. You're stumping me. I can't. Uh -oh. I'm sure everybody in the audience is like, it's awesome. I just can't even think of it. <laughs> it's nervous. Nervous, duh. Yes, yes. I love it. So I love what you brought out. You are expanding your emotional vocabulary when you're playing this game because there's so many guesses thrown out. And I was really surprised to find out that adults have eight to 10 go-to words that they use all the time to describe how they feel. So I believe it. Yeah. I'm sad. You know, they keep it very basic. And that is what we are modeling for our children. And there are thousands upon thousands upon thousands of emotion words. Yeah. So if we are able to teach our kids that you're not just angry because brother has an ice cream cone and you don't, and anger is boundaries, there's not really any boundaries crossed here. I mean, right. anger can be about other things too, but you're actually jealous. Jealous has the message. There's something that I want. So then right. you figure out how to get what it is that you want. Yeah. Take action and move forward. So I love uh, the opportunity to expand your emotional vocabulary as you play. Well, so and I also love, because I've heard that there are some emotions, and I guess you could do that if you only have eight emotions that are your go-to, you will tend to lump other emotions in those eight baskets. And, and so it really forces you to identify, well, okay, it's in this basket, but let's dive a little bit deeper. What is it that I'm, that I'm really feeling? Exactly. Exactly. Are you ready to try one? Okay. Yes. Okay. Am I going to do it to you? Yes. Okay. So your action is to show the emotion by saying this phrase. Okay. Got it. Okay. You've got to be kidding me. Okay. Now I need to dive into my thing. So I haven't seen it. Or do you want to pick an emotion that you think of and I'll have to guess it and then I won't. Now, you, you go ahead and show me the card so that people on the who are watching this, they can see it. Okay. All right. I'm ready. Okay. Gotta be kidding me. Oh, you're kind of sad. Yeah, that's it. Oh, is it? <laughs> that was an easy one. 
<laughs> Good job. Good job. Thank you. So what, what is super fun about this game? Like, first of all, we all show emotions differently. Right. And as you play, you recognize that. And it's this little aha that can help you increase your empathy because right. you realize maybe I shouldn't just go around assuming I know that if you look like that, which is how I look when I'm angry, then you must be angry. Right, right. And and acting accordingly. So maybe we can communicate better. We can ask questions like, I, I think that you might be angry. Is that accurate? Do you want to talk about it? Um, and then I have a whole variety of things to do. Like there's, uh, questions about like, what would this emotion look like in just your arms or just your walk? Um, play the electric guitar in that emotion, right? Move like a cheetah, you know? right? <laughs> all, all kinds of things. Um, and that gives us the opportunity to notice body language and practice that skill. I was just going there. Yeah. And and I, I sort of separated, separated things out so we could really just tune into the tone of voice when yes. you're doing a saying instead of taking in everything, right? So we can practice those skills in isolation and together. And um, as you play, sometimes people don't pick up what you're laying down. And then you realize, oh, I can communicate better how I feel and not expect everybody around me to just know what it is that I'm feeling. And if you want to fix it, that would be helpful. Right. Too. <laughs> right. So I uh, love that. I love that it, it really is teaching how to communicate too, you know, and, and your body language and your tone of voice does not get relayed in a text message or an email. And, and let's face it, most people communicate by text every single day, all day long, you know, and, and I've, I've talked with my kids about this so much about how it's really, really important to understand how to hold a conversation and, and to understand what's being conveyed, not just by the words, but by the tone and by the body language and how you have to be so, so careful when you're writing a text to, mm -hmm to convey those messages as well. You know, even if you're saying, I'm not mad, this is my observation or whatever, you know? So I, I really love that, that you're teaching that. Have you, in your teaching, do you feel like that, like what are the ahas that people get when they're, when they're playing? The, I mean, you, I know you've talked about some of them, but, but if you can remember somebody going, oh, I never thought about that. Like, like show me some of those experiences. Well, one of the things that the game teaches is it has us move through the beginnings of emotional regulation. Okay. So it has us identifying an emotion, allowing ourselves to try it on and um, getting that energy out through the actions or the talking or the movement. Right. So it's just a natural, let's, let's identify, feel, get that energy out, which a lot of us didn't have the knowledge right. when we were younger. So I love that people aren't always even aware that they're learning these skills as they play the game because it's just a fun card game, right? Right. But they, I think one of the big ahas a lot of people have is that um, we all have these emotions, especially for kids. We all have these emotions. We're not judging them as we play the game. Yeah. Right. And most yeah. of the times people think that there are negative and positive emotions. But as we play this game, we recognize we all feel them. Mm -hmm. they don't last. In fact, I love to teach this fact along with playing the game is that emotional, the emotional chemistry in our body lasts 60 to 90 seconds after wow. we feel. It. And that's not how long it feels like we're sad when we're in right mind. that's actually really fast but that's just the chemical component of it right right but we can keep that chemical com component going i guess if we want to right um, we don't necessarily want to but we tend to with the thoughts that are are running in our heads on nonstop so right it can seem like um we're in an emotion a lot longer than the actual emotional energy lasts at the beginning 
Well, I'm sure, I mean, how many times have we had an experience and you replay it over and over and over? And so that's keeping that emotion alive, so to speak. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, one of the things that's my favorite about playing the game um, is that as you're playing and you're trying on all these emotions for fun, um, you're allowing yourself to be a little bit vulnerable with your emotions in front of other people. Mm -hmm. And that um, allows us to connect. That's what connection is, is being vulnerable with each other. Yeah. I really um, want to see that in our kids. I, I taught this class and I taught this game to third through eighth graders in, in a homeschooling setting two years ago. And um, it's so important to me to teach them that all these emotions are okay and it's okay to share them because when they're having their big feelings, we want them to come to somebody that they trust. Right. So they, they um, get to understand that as they're playing this game, they can trust these people with their emotions. They're not being judged. Right. right. And everybody else has them. So it's not just me feeling super alone or me feeling very, very angry about something. Um, I love creating that safe space. I love creating that connection. And I can play with kids in school settings or in the prison with men who are there because they didn't know how to handle their emotions at some point in their life to a point where, where it hurt them and others, right? Yeah. So what was the reception like in the prisons? Like that's a totally different setting than with kids. Yes. It's actually pretty universal. It's, it's very fun. So I'm playing with these great men just, um, and they're just like the kids or actual other adults that will come. They'll start to whisper, I need help. <laughs> <laughs> because then, it's really hard because sometimes you get actions that don't go with the emotion and it breaks people's brains they're like well, yeah that doesn't make any sense and it can you can put them together that helps things stand out it helps you really get in touch with how do I feel this emotion despite right. the silly thing and I'm having this you know deeper you know emotion like how does that work so it really it breaks your brain in a good way but yeah. it's fun because some of them would be like, okay, I need help with this one. <laughs> right. It was really fun. And uh, several of the men were like, how can I share this with my family? Because they recognize like, this is what can draw me closer to my family. This is what can help us start conversations. Yeah. Like I have had the most amazing conversations. Can I tell you about one with young adults? Yes, I would love it. Okay. So first day of 2020, none of us knew what was up, right? Right, right. And we were having a New Year's party at my house. And I had a bunch of my friends over, but they're actually friends of one of my kids. Um, but I homeschooled a lot of them. So I knew them all. And um, they love to play my game. So we are playing my game for like an hour and a half. And we get to my all play card. So I'll show you my all play card. Let's see. I don't know if you can read that, but it says, yeah. be still and silent for 10 seconds. In what body parts do you feel the emotion? And then you need to just take turns sharing. So for okay. instance, if I, if I picked up um, anger, like where do you feel that in your body? If you think about it and try to feel anger, like where is it? Like I have this... Yeah. Like, again, I'm holding my breath because anger is dangerous for me. Mm -hmm. um, but then I just have this like sinking feeling and it kind of ends up in the pit of my stomach. That's like kind of like, where it is for me. Like, I feel like it starts like at my heart and it just drops to my, to my yeah. stomach, my core. Mm -hmm. So it's really interesting to hear other people describe where they feel it. Because first of all, we're not used to thinking about it that way. Right. And recognizing this is causing some discomfort in my body. 
So paying attention to that, especially if we teach that to young kids or those of us who didn't learn to pay attention to our bodies, right? we can identify that emotion faster the next time around. Cause we're like, Oh, I remember when I feel this pit in my yeah. stomach, that can mean that I'm angry. Right. So, and the first time squirrel, but related <laughs> the first time I took this game around to my neighbors, I took it to one of my neighbors and I showed him, he, he got the all play card and the word was anger. And he goes, Oh, that's easy. I feel it in my head. And I was like, that was the inside inside face i didn't show the out i didn't show right. that right. i was like, huh. but inside i was like that's not where i feel it are you serious because i really thought we most all feel it the exact same way i guess right and when he said that i thought that's so interesting because i know that he gets headaches sometimes some severe oh, headaches. Oh, interesting. Who knows? Maybe they're related to something, you yeah. know, in that feeling. Maybe they're not, but it was eye opening to me. So, so we're going around back to the original story. Right. We're going around, and all 16 of us are answering the question of where we feel this emotion in particular. We finish that, and one of the kids says, Hey guys, what emotion do you hate and why? Oh, that's a really good question. Right? Yeah. And they because we were in the habit, they went around one by one, everybody answered it. It was an hour long listening to each other share what emotion we really hated and why the story behind it. And it was like my Well, and talk about connection. You know, I bet that group of kids is just you know, to be able to be that vulnerable and to share like that, that's amazing. That's really mm -hmm. cool. Mm -hmm. It helped that they were all, they were all friends and that's probably why you felt comfortable enough to ask. Right. Right. But to, to find that space and time to do that, it's not something that we necessarily plan. Right. And having a card game that you're just playing and you can meet people where they're at. Like if you're a parent and the very first time I played this with a family, I, um, there was a five or six year old girl and she got jealous and really? she had no idea what jealous was. Yeah. So I just told her if your brother had an ice cone and you didn't, and you really wanted one, that's what jealousy feels like. She's like, Oh, okay. And she's able to act it out. Boom. Like that. She just didn't have the vocabulary to know what it meant. Right. She knew what the emotion was. Yeah. And so now she can identify it. And I watch as I played with this beautiful family, I watched the dad watching his children in awe as they yeah. were playing this game. It was so cool. It was so cool. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. And then I love, like, I love going to corporate retreats. I'll play this game and after two hours sometimes, because sometimes people want to play for a long time, <laughs> we'll play the game and we know each other like that. And we started out as strangers. So yeah, that's amazing. It's fun. You can play this game for five minutes. Like I have a friend of mine who leaves them on the counter and after school, when her kids come in, they'll just pick a card or two. They'll play it. They'll talk about the emotion. They'll you know, have you, when's the last time you felt that, you know, just use it for a little bit of five minute learning mm -hmm. lesson a day. And then, like I said, some people will play two hours <laughs> and I anything, love that. there's like no prescribed time, but it's just, everybody knows when you're done, you're just like, got all the laughter out, right? Laugh any longer. We're just done. And you just kind of feel it energetically. It's very strange, but that's happened to every single, single time. Really? That's fascinating. I love that so much. So thank you so much for sharing us with us about your game. I mean, it sounds absolutely amazing. Before we get into where people can find it, I would love for you to just pinpoint. I, I think you've, you've described it um, in your talking today. But I'd love for you to pinpoint your why and what you feel like your purpose is in your life right now. 
Okay. I appreciate that question. My, my experiences in my life, um, I've had several people close to me with addictions and I've watched how those addictions have shut them down to where they're kind of a shell of themselves. And they're people that I know and love and I see their gifts and their, their light that I want them to bring to the world or, you know, that I, I love seeing people bring to the world and it's just shut down. Yeah. And they're numb. And I, I, think, I think I can say that most of us have bad habits that can lead to addictions. We all have our form of addiction, right? That we right. turn for it. For sure. Could, could be food, could be um, relationships, could be pornography, it could be all kinds of things. Um, some are more harmful to ourselves, some are more harm, harmful to other people. But um, it, it's just, I've watched relationships and families erode because there was no understanding of what to do and and to um, really be able to face what they were feeling emotionally and acting on it daily. Um, They just had such a habit of turning away from their emotions and that has affected me deeply Mm -hmm. in certain relationships and brought a lot of pain. Um, and then I'm homeschooling these beautiful kids, strong families that are there for them. And these kids are coming to me with the same addictions, but they're just starting. Oh, wow. And, and it, I, I can't, I can't handle it. Like yeah. <laughs> really, truly, like if you ask me what's, my favorite thing in the world is to see people shine in their own light and genius. Yeah. Like there's nothing better yeah. than seeing who you are and what you bring to the world. And I'm grateful to rub shoulders and just like feel of that light and learn something from you. And I think every person on this planet is like that. They I are, do too. They're their own unique light. And, and like we get this opportunity to, learn from our mistakes or our pain that maybe others caused or we caused, usually we cause, (laughs) you know, we get to learn from that and we get to like show a light for others through that mess that we've been through, which I love. So I love America's Got Talent. Yeah. (laughs) People are shining in their genius. I don't right. I don't love every single thing I see there, but most of it, like, it just makes me happy. Even if I'm not interested in how cute your dog is jumping around things. Right. Awesome. The connection. Awesome that you're so good at that. Like it makes me happy. Right. And so really on a deep level, I want every person to know how amazing they are and the effect that they have in the world just by being them, being their light, like, And I hate when I see that light just snuffed out day by day because we don't know like what to do with our emotions because it just ruins relationships. It, it grinds things to a halt. It just, uh, so that's what I fight against. And I, I fight against people losing themselves because they don't know what to do with their emotions. And you know, I really, really love that you said that because really, and it's interesting how you can take an idea and run with it one way or run with it another way. It's that idea is really the catalyst for me starting this podcast. I see so many women who get so caught up in the day to day and, you know, or don't know how to process their emotions and what do they do with all their thoughts and, and they start to lose themselves. And, and so I just, really, really want them, everybody to know that, you know, their story, their journey has value and what they're learning has value and they may not see it, but it's there. And a lot of times it's the the emotional garbage that we have that covers all of that up and it makes it so that they can't let their light shine. Like it, it really wants to. So 
So I love that you have this avenue of helping helping people to know who they truly are and how they can get to that point where they can understand that. So thank you so much for sharing with us, Melissa. I love it. So um, tell us where people can purchase your Emotion Commotion game and where they can find you if they want to contact you. Okay. So you can go to my website. It's emotioncommotiongame.com. And I have a free gift. Can I tell you about my free gift? Yes, please do. Please do. So when we have all that emotional energy built up, there are quick ways that we can take care of it. But sometimes we need some time and some different things that really appeal to us, some emotional tools that will help us get them out, that energy out. And so I have three free emotional tools that I use for myself and I've used with the kids that I've taught and I want to give them to you for free. So you can use them for families or in your teaching, right? If you go to my website, emotioncommotiongame.com, at the very tip top, there's a little green banner and it says click here for three emotional tools. So you want to click on that. Okay. And is it a surprise what the these tools are or do you want to tell us a little bit about it? Well, I can tell you about them if you would like. Okay. Yes, please do. <laughs> They're all kind of artsy. I think like I have I have collected a lot of emotional tools and I think of them like an educator would. Like I see people who learn kinesthetically or auditory or just have different ways that they learn. And so I kind of have just lots of these in my head of tools that will help you if you're this kind of learner. Right. Um, Fantastic. Yeah. These three emotional tools um, are a bit artistic. So one is helping build the emotions that we want to feel about ourselves. It's helping our identity Mm -hmm. and it's an I am poster. So I give you like a really easy way to create a poster with power words that you really resonate with. Love it. Um, And then the other two, one's neurographic art, which is really cool. And it's a great way to um, meditatively and artistically get your emotions out and help your body just kind of relax and stop being in your brain about them. Right. And then um, the other one is a technique I learned, which is really simple that anybody can do. And it's scribbling. So I have some really cool examples in there of different scribbles and uh uh scribbling saved my Christmas two year, years ago. I have never so, heard of this tool like I feel like I know like all the tools there are but I have never heard of that so this is fantastic yeah it's really fun it's really it's really really powerful and simple yeah fantastic yeah. I love it so everybody go on to um to Melissa's website Say it one more time. Emotioncommotiongame.com. Emotioncommotiongame.com. Awesome. Thank you so much, Melissa, for coming here. It has been lovely. I just love being with you. And you just have such a fantastic spirit about you and energy about you. And this has been awesome. So thank you. Well, thank you so much, Brenda. All right. Take care. Celebrate your dreams. Let them take flight. Shining bright in every step you take, let your life